In this video, we're going to start using some basic charting and formatting. By the end of this video, we're going to be able to use a drop down to automatically pull out an athlete, and then that will pull out their data from the data set here on the left. We will automatically apply a conditional format to it to rank the values from high to low, and then dynamically chart the values down below so that we're able to easily compare our athletes versus one another. This is going to be really powerful, and it's the beginning of any big dashboard project that you may want to do. So let's get started. Okay, so we're back. And in order to get this video started, we are using the same data set as we've used in the previous three videos. All I've gone ahead and done is created a couple boxes here where we're going to be able to pull our values into. So the first thing one that we have is just um, a box signifying where we're going to put the date. And then I like to color code the cell where I'm going to have a drop down menu. And then in these cells here, what we're going to do is have a drop down menu to select our athletes and then use a formula to pull, pull in their um, bench press. And then we will create a dynamic chart off of those values. So to get started, what we'll do is go ahead and create the drop down for the date. So the way that we're going to do this is select this cell where we want the date to go. And what I'm going to do is use a drop down by going to data and then data validation. It will open up this box here on the left hand side. And from there, I'm going to add a rule. Now it's going to show me the range where this is going to be applied. I'm going to select drop down from a range. And the range that I want to use here is this column of B2 all the way down. Now, when we're using data validation drop downs with Google Sheets, one of the cool things that it does is it will only show multiple values once. So for our date um, column here, we have 2022-0101, 2022-0101, etc. We have this date in here several times. We have the next date in several times. It's only going to show us each one once. Now from there, um, because the data validation has closed, has changed a little bit recently, what we're going to do is go to advanced options, and then I just like to choose arrow, and I'm going to hit done, and now we're going to have this drop down in here, and as you can see, each of those dates are only done once. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for our athlete names. We will select all of the cells where we want the athlete names to go. We could go data, data validation again, but our box is still open here on the right hand side. So we will hit add a rule and we will go drop down from a range. And this time what we're going to do is select our athlete column. So that is A2 all the way down to A. Hit OK. And then again, advanced options, arrow. And then I'm going to hit done. I'm going to close this off because we should be done here now. And now I'm able to actually select any one of my athletes. So that's step one. Now step two, what we want to do is write a formula here that depending on the athlete that we select, we want to go through and do a lookup to find where the date matches. And um, that way we can find the bench press 1RM that we want to do. There's several different ways we could do this. We're going to use the filter formula because it's probably the easiest and the most scalable. So what I'm going to do here is I'll type is I'll put in the athlete and then in the column beside what we'll type is equals filter. Open this up. The range that we want to filter from is this column C to C comma. Now it's going to ask me what my conditions are. The first one is going to be the, that um, column A to A is equal to the athlete name that we select. If we close that off, what you're going to see is that we're actually going to get all of the values. So I'm going to type in my bracket and hit enter. And now it gives us all of our values for that athlete. We need to add another condition so that it knows to only select it when we have the date that we want. So the condition now looks like this. What we'll do is we'll select the B column and we want it when it is equal to this F1 column I'm going to use the F4 key to lock that in with two dollar signs, which signify that if I drag this or move the formula around, this cell is not going to change. We're going to lock that cell in. When I hit enter, now we've kind of narrowed that down to one value. Now the cool thing about how we wrote this, I should be able to drag this all the way down. It's going to give us an error, but as I select my different athletes, now this formula is automatically going to pull out their values. The only thing we have left to do is clean up that error so that it makes our sheet look a little nicer. The easy way to do that is if I just go to the front of the formula, I'll type if error, 
and then at the end, comma, and it's going to ask me what I want to put if there is an error. I like to just put a double quotation, which means an empty cell, and then hit enter. It doesn't look like it changed anything, but if I drag it down to a cell without a value, it's calculating as an error, but just showing an empty cell because we've told it what to do if there is an error. Now from there, what we can do is apply a conditional formatting to these cells here. So if I highlight all of these cells here and I go to format, conditional formatting, it's going to bring up this um, box on the right hand side. I'm going to use a color scale and the one I want is that the lower values are red and the higher values are green. I'm going to change the colors around just a little bit. I like to make them a little bit more washed out. So we'll take kind of a, a red, yellow, green approach. And when I hit done, we've applied that now to F3 to F10. And as we select new athletes, it's going to change the colors for everyone based on the athletes that we're comparing it to. Green is going to be our highest values. The darker the green, the better. And then red is going to be our lowest values. The darker the red, the worse. Now, the last thing that we're going to do on this video is I'm going to take this values and I'm going to create a chart. So what we'll do is we'll hit insert chart and it's going to automatically create a chart for me. Now let's say that it didn't choose a bar chart, which is the appropriate chart for this comparison. What we might want to do is I'm double clicking here. We can use um, the chart type on the right hand side here to change our chart. For instance, we could do a line chart or we could do an area chart of some sort. But since these are distinct values and each athlete has their own value, we're gonna to wanna to use a bar chart. From our chart here, it's going to give us a couple of options. Stacking means that we're gonna stack all of the things on top of each other. 100% means it will show a value out of 100%. Standard means that it would stack um, multiple athlete ones on top of each other and then none. The data range is from E3 to F10. The x-axis is E3 to E10, so that's these cells here, and those are put along the x-axis here at the bottom. Um, if I pull my chart back open, um, the series is F3 to F10. We could add more series. If we switch row and columns, you can see that it just switches it around, okay, and puts the athlete names on the side. We can use column E as labels, which is what we're doing, and then use row three as a header if we wanted to, um, but we don't want to do that because row three is actually has values in it. So from there, we can go to customize. We can do a couple different things. We can make the chart 3D. We could do a compare mode. Um, we can maximize it so that it takes away some of the borders. We can change um, the different fonts and things on it. We can make the background color different. Um, but what I often like to do is just go to the series tab, take the column, and I'm going to make it sort of a red color, but then I like to add a bit of a shading to it, usually about 75%. Um, and it just kind of washes it out a little bit. I forgot to make the background still white. I want the background color to be white. And I just think that that looks pretty good. Now because we've done the chart this way, as I delete athletes from the box up top, it's actually going to be dynamic and we can add athletes in as many as we want, as often as we want. So this is how you start to do some easy formatting and create a dynamic chart. I hope this trick helps you out and if it does, stay tuned to this series as we explore more sports science topics. I'll see you in the next video.